Welcome back to the show. Now, how do businesses stay ahead of the game, especially during tough economic times? Well, the answer is they have to do better than the others. That's right, Joe. In fact, companies that have strong business management capabilities can perform well even during an economic downturn. So it's no wonder that business excellence is fast becoming the buzzword among companies and organizations which are sharing best practices at a conference here. But how does attaining world-class standards of performance translate to economic gains? Well, to help us make sense of the issue, we have with us in studio this morning Mr. N.K. Sharon from India's Tata Group. Morning. Morning, N.K. Very good morning. So tell us, business excellence, what does the term actually mean? How do we define it? See, business excellence is uh, nothing but a pursuit for the continuous improvement and innovation mm -hmm. for winning. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a mindset of the people who have to continuously churn out, you know, newer products, better products, you know, faster delivery. So it, it's, it's how you make organization better in every respect. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the core of you know business excellence right so when when we say business excellence you know we we see that you know how companies are becoming better how companies are become faster how becoming how the companies are becoming uh, less expensive mm -hmm. and and uh, at the end of the day they have to win at the marketplace that's what business excellence so is. how do you implement a culture like that in your workforce in your management I mean like what what kinds of things do you have to do to sort of give them that mindset it's it's not it's a marathon. Uh, it's it's not a one day program where you can do something and you know do the. It's it's a change of the mindset. You know, I'll give you an example from Singapore. Mm -hmm. The Singapore has transformed from a very old colonial uh, economy to kind of a first world economy in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, the process which Singapore adopted. Uh, was very similar to, I would say, the concept of the business excellence which you know, the, your Prime Minister, Mr. Harry Lee, adopted mm -hmm. in Singapore. I think in a company when you do such, kind, when you undertake such initiatives, you have, to, uh, you have to continuously transform, you have to energize the whole organization, you have mm -hmm. to energize the people and uh, keep on telling, uh, keep on showing them the vision of transformation, what, what the company wants to become, Mm -hmm. and preparing the organization to move into that direction. Mm -hmm. So in a big company, it's very challenging to, you know, uh, right. to, to motivate, everybody, yeah, to motivate everybody to work in that And direction. usually the problem is communicating that whole idea because what you're saying is what all, uh, usually in companies people will say, yeah, that's what all the senior management talks about. They have these ideas of we should be the best at this and this. But when it comes down to the nuts and bolts, I mean, they should come and do what we do. Then they can tell us <laughs> exactly what should we be doing to achieve that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's very interesting in a sense that uh, uh, in, in India and in Tata Group particularly, what we have done, uh, there's a lot of learning from the, from the West about the business excellence concept. Mm -hmm. We are following the Malcolm Baldrige model for the business excellence, mm -hmm. which is typically, you know, uh, looking at the process system. But at the same time, we have also learned from the Eastern, uh, you know, part of the world, particularly the Japanese concept, where the focus is on the people. Tatas have always been, you know, very caring employer. Mm -hmm. They have taken, you know, much before even you know the world could understand what the care for the people all about. Mm -hmm. So we have combined this whole concept of West and East, and our whole business excellence model is not only top down, but it's also bottom up. It's a very unique mix of top down and bottom up and also emphasizing lot many things on the business ethics which is pretty important you know to run the business today. So what kinds of examples can you give us of like employees in Tata um, give, be encouraged to do certain things to strive towards business excellence what kinds of examples can you think of where you know this model was implemented and it was run by the sort of workers that you have in Tata Group? You know today in Tata Group of companies uh, if, if you for take example of Tata Steel. Tata Steel is a flagship company of uh, Tata's and uh, recently they took over Chorus also and they, be they have become one of the six largest company, uh, steel company in the world. If you look at Tata Steel, more than 90% of the workforce is engaged in the business excellence and quality initiatives. Mm -hmm. You know, 
more than 7,000, 8,000 quality improvement programs are running at any moment of time in the organization. Mm -hmm. So the people in the team working for improvement, people in the team working for innovation, people in the team, you know, striving to do better. So you will see lot many teams, lot many people, at any moment of time people are working mm -hmm. for you know, accomplish, accomplishing the aspiration of the so company. Just be more efficient, is that what you mean? That's right. Or do you mean there are teams set up to look at how can I, for instance, at Steel, I mean, I, I imagine there is some kind of an assembly line at some point, and they'll say, let's look at this, the 10 steps, how can we make it work better in maybe five steps? Yes, that's right, that's right. So, uh, but, but I will, I will uh, uh, tell you that, uh, you know, one is that improving the efficiency part, which you are talking mm -hmm. about, you know, yeah. Uh, 10 steps to 5 steps. Uh, that, that definitely is one of the deliverable of the quality improvement. But more important is, you know, a mindset of, you know, doing anything which, you know, person is doing in a better way tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So what we are today, you know, tomorrow we have to you be better than today. You must rest your laurels, basically. You always want to sort of motivate your people to do better. Yes, yes. But how do you then incentivize people that way? Because changing mindsets is not a prescribed, you can't just give them a pill and say, okay, now from tomorrow you're going to be on this wavelength. That's, 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 <laughs> that's the biggest challenge. That's the biggest challenge for any organization. And, and there, you know, like you said, it, it, the leadership comes into the picture. The leadership, you know, the vision of the leadership, the communication of the leadership, you know, how you communicate, how, how you reach out to the people. I'll, I'll give you one example uh, for, from one of the companies of Tata Group. We have called a CEO online, MD online, where the CEO is talking to a shop floor worker, you know, on a monthly basis directly. Mm -hmm. So there is no hierarchical boundary between a shop floor person who wants to talk to the CEO of the company. So this company is a pretty big, you know, 50,000, 60,000 people, but a worker or a shop floor person has a direct access to talk, to communicate to the CEO. So it's a top-down and bottom-up communication doing uh, pretty efficiently. And I think that's a crux of... So you empowering know. your workers to believe that they can make a difference in the company's Absolutely. Very empowering. Mm -hmm. empower, empowerment is, is the key word mm -hmm. for... And let's talk a bit more about education, because you've pioneered and initiated an education excellence initiative. They're sort of starting them when they're very young. Um, and that's become a model for programs in India and several other countries. What is it about that program? that has made it successful? You know, education excellence, again, is a very important aspect. Uh, if, if the country wants to uh, become strong, it has to emphasize on the education. Mm -hmm. And I think we in India felt that uh, uh, we have to, you know, make India, if, if we want to make India strong, we have to start, you know, strengthening the school education system. And there we started, you know, we just... I would say uh, took the business excellence concept of the corporate and the quality concept of the corporate into the uh, schools and we started looking at how we can improve the whole education system, how we can improve the learning and teaching because today you see that you know teaching is becoming a very mechanical stuff. Mm -hmm. You know teachers come to the classroom, they teach something, they don't understand whether the students have learned something out of that or not. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming very mechanical. We said that no. Uh, the teaching has to be, you know, learning center teaching. We have to understand how much students are learning out of that teaching. And therefore, we said that, you know, uh, the whole concept of teaching and learning needs to, it uh, should change. It should become more student-centric teaching. And that's well, where the quality concepts comes in. Okay. And it, it has to be because there's no point teaching if no one's learning. That's, that's it's right. It's like talking and no one's that's listening right. to you. It, <laughs> no, no, but, but, but that's a point yeah. that, you know, quality is so obvious. It's yeah. so commonsensical. I'm not talking any rocket science. I'm no. just talking about simple but stuff. That's just it. You say common sense. Sometimes common sense isn't so it's, common it's, after it's, all. It's, it's not well, common. MK, I'm sorry, but we've run out of time, thank so I'm sure so this is a thank you very much. You should go on talking thank you. more thank about you.